Caldera Chronicles. Why drilling the Yellowstone volcano to stop eruptions or generate power is a bad idea. Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles is a weekly column written by scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution is from Michael Poland, geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey and scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. It's a common question, why not just drill into Yellowstone to relieve the pressure? And it seems like a reasonable idea given the way that magma chambers are often depicted, as caverns of expanding liquid magma that just need to be tapped, like letting air out of a balloon. Magma reservoirs are much more complex than this simple depiction, however. Instead of huge balls of liquid magma, they are a mushy mix of rock, melt, crystals and various fluids and gases, with poor interconnectivity and often no sharp boundary between the reservoir and the surrounding rock. Yellowstone provides an excellent example. Seismic imaging techniques, like taking an MRI of the Earth, have revealed two huge magma reservoirs beneath the caldera system, one at 5 to 17 kilometers, 3 to 10.5 miles, beneath the surface, and a deeper one at 20 to 50 kilometers, 12.5 to 31 miles. The speed of seismic waves through these reservoirs suggests they are mostly solid. The upper reservoir appears to be only 5 to 15 percent molten, and the deeper 2 to 5 percent molten. Pressure within this type of system is not like air in a balloon, and it cannot be easily dissipated by poking a hole, or even a hundred holes, into the complex structure. Within a magmatic system, pressure accumulates because magma and associated fluids are accumulating. It would be as if a balloon were filling with mostly solid cement, with some poorly connected regions that were wet and contained some gases. Poking a hole in that balloon would not cause the cement to disappear, nor would it reach all parts of the poorly connected, wet, part of the system. Moreover, the drill holes intended to tap the gases in a magma reservoir would plug shut with dense taffy-like magma without constant intervention. But what about cooling the magma reservoir by pumping water into the subsurface? This was the subject of a 2015 report by Jet Propulsion Laboratory engineers, who calculated that the magma chamber could be cooled if a sufficient supply of water were pumped through the subsurface over the course of thousands of years, generating geothermal energy in the process. While this proposal might seem to make some sense, the calculation overlooked a number of complicating factors. For example, the hotspot fueling volcanism at Yellowstone provides a steady supply of heat. Cooling the magma body by pumping water into the subsurface would be like attempting to cool a pot of boiling water by steadily adding droplets of cold water but leaving the burner on. <laughs> 